Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Jesus. So, what are we here to talk about today, John? Today, Besides your overworn tire. <laughs> We're here to talk. Uh, this is more of a therapy session yeah. where I talk about my problems and how I can't afford to buy new tires. Yeah, my worn out rubbers. rubbers holes in them. <laughs> yeah. And flat knobs. <laughs> so, these are the uh, Pirelli Scorpion Enduro tires. I'm yep. assuming they're Enduro. I don't know. Well, they are because that's what we use them for. Yeah, there. <laughs> so the only reason I okay, so uh, like so several years ago, I did a a review of this tire here, actually the set, which is the Metzler Six Days Extreme Enduro set. That I, is destroyed inside. You no, looked at that. That's just like stuff that's been in there because this, this tire's been sitting outside no, for but years. It's, it's the it's not. It's the rubber tearing from the like flexing of run flat. The inside of it. That's what happens yeah. when the tire's flat. Or it could just be crust that's developed from years of rain. Is, this is rubber. Okay. Sure about that? It's rubber, look at it. Let you no, it's see. not. Actually, you know what that is? What is it? That is, uh, that is, is it paper? That's paper from roofing my shed. The fuck? Okay, here it is. <laughs> that's how long we've been waiting to do this just, video, folks. Yeah. Six years <laughs> later. <laughs> we, we've something. recently switched front tires. We ran Metzler six days front and back. Yeah. We did a separate review of the rear tire, which you can find here. And now we're here to talk about the front tire, which we have switched to something entirely different, which we're trying out, and we're going to tell you how that's working out. So the reason, though, that I decided to switch was because basically the, the tread pattern is almost exactly the same. There's a little bit of right. difference, but... What's, so a, what's a tread pattern theory for a front tire, right? You notice they're like tiny little blocks, they're kind of spaced far out. Why do we like that? So, I mean, the front tire, I think in terms of performance, has two different characteristics. One being stopping traction right, right. which is because typically it's not, with the bike just sit up straight and you're like hit the brakes and try to stop the bike right yeah it's not driving you right in a straight line unless you're riding um uh, what were those two-wheel drive bikes oh not sherco um, oh was it mako or somebody that made like a yeah it'll no, come back to yeah. after the video but so the, the the tires are basically mid cornering traction or side hill traction right and straight line stopping. Yeah, straight line stopping traction. So what, what happens, it's interesting to think, I guess, about the physics really quick of stopping. So you'll notice that there's no like big tread block on here. In no case is the front tire ever like driving or funneling dirt, right? Right. So yeah. like you hit unless the brakes. It's, unless it's when you're braking, right? In no, but, but, but then it's dirt. not, but it's not turning. The difference is it's not turning. Right. You, lock up, you lock it up and it's gonna slide with the same treads in the dirt. So you're not, you're not moving dirt through a tread pattern. Yeah. The same okay. way that you would with like a rear tire. Mm -hmm. um, so like with a rear tire, right, You we, we like treads for hill climbs that funnel the dirt and then get a put it, push it in front of a big block and then you shovel it back and that's where you get your drive traction from. With a front tire, um, let's say you're, you're dropping off a hill or you're trying to stop in a straight line, you basically hit the brakes, you lock up the front tire, right? And it's just gonna slide. So you need, you need these skinny little treads to basically needle into the dirt. Mm -hmm. and, and work like the um, cleats, like on soccer shoes or something, right? And just right. like stick. Yeah. That's that's the, the basic concept. I think the biggest performance factor though is the, the mid-cornering traction, right? As it's going yeah. around. And you can see, actually see where that, on this used one, where that's really been the, the, the main part of the wear, right? Where it's taking the most of the abuse is, yeah. is where these chunks, these knobs have been just chunked out really bad. And that's probably the biggest thing that I've noticed about this tire. So the really reason, that I got this tire, or wanted to get it, was I was looking for a tire that had a harder carcass. And the important thing that about the, the review that we're doing is that we're running these tires with tubeless. And the tubeless, obviously you don't have an inner tube, right? You're relying on the carcass of the tire to hold the outer chamber of air and keep that tire pressure. And if you, if you jam a stick through it that's sufficiently big, and you, obviously we run slime inside the carcass of the tire, but if you jam a stick through that's too big, you have to use tire plugs like you can see here. I've run, Several. I have two tire plugs in this this one, one here and one here, and it got to the point where it was so bad, I just kept shoving tire plugs in here. 
I remember that on the and side it, of the and road. And it just kept it just kept falling apart. Well, right? It was like it was like a seam tearing yeah, it was at just, that point. Yeah. I mean, six tire plugs in it, and we still went back right. flat. Like, and this this carcass is really kind of soft, soft yeah. and and that's the difference that I was looking at with this tire is that this tire is super hard. The carcass on this one is like, I mean, I think that this is this is like a medium compound, probably equivalent, and this is hard. This is yeah, like a hard tire. Yeah. So that's what I wanted because I I noticed because I ran numerous pairs of this this front tire, and I, I just kept having the same Punctured problem them. with the terrain that we're riding on. So yeah. and that's probably something we should talk about the the kind of riding that we're doing enduro riding, yeah, mixed terrain, but a combination of like mountain rocky single track and like a little bit of desert with like the shale and the sand. And then probably 50% is like that loam chaparral, like the rolling foothills type thing. Yeah, uh, and, and we do some desert riding, which is actually where I noticed, because we do like one desert camping trip every year and we go out and we ride, and I think that's where I... It's where we destroy the front tires. Yeah, it's usually where I punch a hole in this well, one. Because those, those rocks are super sharp and you're going over them mm -hmm. at speed. There's no, there's no, like when often the not are like a trail like and, and, and it's just, it just slices them. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the way the tread pattern is built, um, I mentioned it doesn't have any big blocks of tread. There's also like a shape, there's a sort of a triangle shape to these tread blocks. And they're designed, like I said, to sort of plant. But in cornering, you see how these are like, I will show you up close, but these are sloped in this, uh, call it like a pyramid. And they're set in behind these. That's to give you that cornering performance. And we've run some tires that are more like a desert tire that have like a more consistent straight across um, tread pattern or bigger blocks. Um, they're less likely to get damaged like on rocks and stuff because you've got more tread um, knobs sticking out. But where you really notice the difference is in this one, if you lean this into single track and you hit those corners pretty hard, those more like desert oriented, um, like bigger block front tires will wash out super easy. And it's, it's an ex like a very, very noticeable difference between a tire like this where these skinny little knobs, it, it's like an interesting trade off in the back. You kind of want like big blocks to dig, right? Maybe the spacing, you know, you can talk about that, but you want big blocks in the front. You want these skinny little blocks um, so they can actually set and like yeah. bite into the dirt and give you that, that cornering performance. And it's super noticeable. Yeah, I think um, part of what it is is that you have, like you have a spacing, you have a, a wider spacing between right. the center line stopping traction knobs. And then you've got this tighter pattern along the outer edge, right? And that's kind of capturing the dirt that's in right. between the two center line knobs, right? Like it's, it's cupping, yep. it's, it's, it's just like a, creating a cup right here. Right, think, pocket right there that. And, to, and like to hold. Yeah. And you can see, and then for hard cornering, I think it's these that basically just dig into the outside of your turn. And that's why right. these are shredded because they've, they've been doing their job. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely see the long-term effects of how these perform and really where the... Where the where the, well, like, like this one, you can see the stress. So right. the stress is, is this way out on these tread blocks. Um, and that's as the, the tire's pushing you in, you're on the inside edge of it, right? And that inside edge is just slipping as you make your corner and it's, it's these. Yeah. The interesting thing about this particular tire is that it has a really hard rubber compound. And I mean, you, you can see the difference quite noticeably between what happens when you, when you run a softer tire, right? There's, there's benefits and disadvantages to running a softer compound tire, and there's benefits and disadvantages of running a hard compound tire, right? This tire is not nearly as chunked out on the side knobs, and you can see other things like, like the carcass it's of the tire. The there's, there's cracking right here. You can see this. So the sidewall's been stressed from running tubeless. Right, at really low pressures, because they <laughs> probably run under six PSI in the front tire. And eventually, right from that compression, of the carcass, you're gonna get cracking. Actually, this is probably the best spot for it. You can see right here and oh, yeah. right here, you get all these cracks and they're just, you know, they go all the way down to the, into the nylon threads on the inside. But you didn't get with the softer compound. No, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get that at all. Sense. But I also got, you know, sharp sticks jabbing through this quite a bit more. So, I mean, it just depends on the kind of terrain you're riding. But I think even out here in California where we are running on a little bit harder terrain, like these are more susceptible to extreme failures. Whereas if I ran a little bit higher higher pressure in this tire, I would probably right. get away without having these cracking here. Like it's just me being lazy and not airing up my tire. I don't think mine is cracked. I think I, cause I run like a little higher run, PSI yeah. in the front. I, I, my side knobs look exactly like this. They're chunked out and disappearing, but with a little higher tire pressure, it's not cracking. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a trade off, right? Like you, 
you're losing some tire life on this, but it's holding up to the end of what you have in terms of life. Whereas this one's as likely to puncture day one as day, you know, 50. And, yeah. Uh, right. Can and screw you out on the trail. Yeah. At that's, least for this terrain. Anyway, right. Yeah. I think that's the biggest advantage that this one has. Um, I mean, it does have slightly different tread pattern in that the mid cornering knobs, these knobs here, these are more of a triangle uh, period permit, and these are more of like a, it's a kind of like almost a heart shape. These here. So it's similar, the outside is the same, it's what they did right. on the back. Yeah. yeah they still, the outermost knobs, they kind of ramp up the same. These Slow do the same thing. Bit. These knobs are almost completely identical, but these are more of like a, like and a heart shape. Mm. So these these outer knobs, the way they slope out, provides really good side hilling until you rip them all off like we do. And yeah. Then you don't have any side hills. And there is a, a noticeable performance difference when your tires get to this yeah. stage where their their side knobs are almost completely gone. Oh, for shit. Yeah, <laughs> I've can't noticed. Turn, you can't on like, hill. yeah, trying to like you know if you're doing like a like a hill climb and you're you're yeah, you're turning you in, in and you're trying to pivot up a hill and it's just like your front end washes, washes when it gets yeah. so that is kind of a drawback to this where the the knobs start to chunk out to the point where you really lose the, the performance benefits. I, I mean, let's be honest though, most guys well, I don't know about most guys. A lot of the guys that we ride with are changing their tires like as soon as these little rubber like indicators are gone. <laughs> the injection molding. The, yeah, the injection tabs <laughs> Nipples are um, gone. Yeah. So they're never going to get to that point and they'll never they'll never have yeah. that experience. Um, they spend four times as much on tires. Well, one of the things that we're really good at is experiencing the full life of the tire and sharing that experience with you so that you'll know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, and how far you can push it before it won't corner for shit anymore. Yeah. It starts out great. <laughs> <laughs> and these last few rides, I'm like, man, I can't, like, it's like can't you're do saying, it's turning yeah. into the hill when you need to mm -hmm. pivot. And like, you got to stand the bike up straight in order to get into like the center treads or it won't hold that corner. <laughs> it's yeah. like you can't lean into it. <laughs> you got to adjust your riding for the tread depth of your of your worn out tire, which is, uh, that's how cheap we are. <laughs> so what are we recommending front tires? I don't know. I think we're still... I'm still on the hunt for the perfect yeah. front tire, honestly, for this terrain. Like I do, there are certain things that I like about this one. Um, I still like it. I like the, the traction and the way that it performs on the trail. It's very consistent and it wears very evenly. Like one of the things that I noticed compared to running like some motocross tires is that these split center line knobs, when you run a softer tire, they tend to split, right? And oh, so they'll yeah. wear faster on the inside than they do on the outside. And that's just from that constant, every time it comes around, the tire is flexing enough to bend the knob. And these don't seem to do that. They, they seem to wear evenly, even on the split center line knobs. You know, like something, something else I noticed about this too, running like a bunch of single track and we did Kennedy Meadows um, a couple months back and I had this, these side knobs were chunked out like this, but like halfway. So you had like the outside part of mm -hmm. it and the inside half was chunked out and they actually cornered just as well half chunked as they did brand new. It wasn't until the outer edge started like how these are like whittled down yeah. to like little points. You've lost, like there's no grip this way across them anymore, um, which is where like, hitting this is what gives you that that cornering, right? And mm -hmm. so as long as the outside half of this was in place, they cornered just fine. Mm. Once the outside edge started to whittle down, um, that's when they, they like noticed that they lost their yeah. delivery. Yeah, and I think for like the performance of the tires, at least what I've noticed, when I noticed the performance of a front tire, like they all stop fine. Like I can hardly ever tell the difference between a front tire oh. in terms of straight line driving I would, traction. I would argue with you there, Brian, Really, I will not throw out the name of them because I don't really have a problem with the tires. It just didn't work for our uses, but there's a noticeable stopping difference in the tires that I've had on in the recent past. Okay. Um, it, I guess I have only run this style of tire for like so years now. Across so. this style, yeah, like whatever. Yeah. Um, compound doesn't matter that much for forward stopping, but if you go with like the bigger block, like desert front yeah. tires. I guess if you're comparing like an ADV tire or like a heavy desert tire will to not, these. Will not stop you. Like you, yeah, need, okay. you need these thin little Treads. Right, if they're, they're needly, blocks, right? They will not, they just don't yeah. dig, they slide across the top of the dirt, and you'll have a lot more like front washouts, right? Noticeably. I mean, I guess that's really the, the thing that you need to think about when you're when you're thinking about buying a front tire or even a rear tire for that matter is the the surface pressure, right? So the smaller the knob, right. the higher the surface pressure, and that has the reliability, sink. right? And, and the bigger the knob, the lower the surface pressure, which they're going to. They're not going to have that kind of needly 
ground puncturing cleat like effect right so but it, then again dep it totally depends on the train that's why i don't want to trash the other tires because i'm sure if you're riding like a lot of rock yeah. where you'd almost want like a something closer to a street tire where all the treads were closer together and you have more contact surface as opposed because it doesn't if you're riding on rocks it doesn't matter how thin your treads are you're never going to like cleat in and, and like punch through right obviously so there you need you need surface area mm -hmm. to give you your stopping power right? right which you get out of bigger tread blocks right if you're riding in arizona you want one thing if you're riding in california you probably want something a little bit different if you're riding in washington or oregon right. you probably want something very different so here in california where we have a semi-arid, uh, dry, and you know, relatively dry, like loose-ish dirt. You need yeah. to be able to like, like the cleat concept. You need to be able to bite into it and hold it. Yeah, these tires do work really well for that. Um, haven't really had the chance to try them in any kind of like muddy terrain. I guess if anybody has suggestions for a tire that's got tread pattern like this, but maybe some different compound options, I'd, I'd be ears. Yeah, I, I would love to hear more about that because I'm. I'm not married to this tire. Like, I think it's great for the style of riding that we're doing. I mean, when it's new, it feels great. But it has its own wear issues, like the Metzler did. But I, I do like that this one has a harder carcass. I would love a harder carcass with softer knobs. So counterpoint, I punctured a hole in my Pirelli two weeks in, and I, the patch has been holding now for almost a year. Well, what is it? Right, so there? yeah, the carcass hasn't split. Like that one so, that, yeah, that's started true. to actually it, it tear, tear apart, tear. yeah. Like there was no way I could keep air pressure in it. And even with this one, the, the carcass is probably so hard that you wouldn't have to worry about denting a rim just because it doesn't, it doesn't, you'd have to take a pretty hard hit oh, before you. I, I've, so I've run, was it the Metzler or this one that I ran flat, flat? I think it was the Metzler. I think it was the same, the same thing, but anyway, I ran it totally flat. Not the, yeah. The big, it was like the tubeless had failed and it was still, it was fine. Yeah. So I think that's, that's it. Um, so good tire, not a perfect tire. Yeah, I mean, there again. Well, maybe it is, we just. It's a out. perfect tire for someone's situation, maybe not ours. I'm not so attached to it that I wouldn't try something else. Yeah. Cool, uh, yeah. let's talk about our chin mounts real quick and then let these yeah. poor, poor souls go. Um, so we manufacture a line of GoPro chin mounts. Um, obviously they mount to the chin area of your helmet. Custom designed for every different helmet. So here we've got, I think a Fox V3, this is. Uh, this is for the 68 tr 2 Yep. It's actually the helmet I run, so I should have recognized that. <laughs> um, but but you can see, like, vastly different style of mount. So they really are custom to that particular helmet. No, they will not cross over. If the helmet's not listed, we don't have it yet, unfortunately. Though we're working on it. So keep sending the suggestions. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, tons of benefits, which we won't go into right now, I guess. But Yeah, check them out. we got a ton, bunch of videos on these specifically. Yeah. But if you need a chin mount for your GoPro, check these out. These are the way to go. Best chin mounts on the market. I have no horse in that race. Yeah. <laughs> no bias there. No bias. <laughs> so check these out. Thank you for watching. Yeah, uh, we'll add yeah. links in the description below. We will do that. Subscribe because we have an amazing podcast where we bring That's guys true. like Cody Webb, um, Graham Jarvis, Cooper Rabbit, and other amazing riders and many more to come. And you do not want to miss those. Those are fun conversations, um, podcast style, but we do them in YouTube videos. So subscribe so you catch those. Yeah? Now get out of here. <laughs>